Oh, do you see, see the boss? Go ahead, double one. It's top, we'll go. SPE, SPE, go. LRD, LRDs, go. SRO. SRO, go, you have a range, clear to launch. Thank you very much. Columbia's a go. Okay, so we're going to have a couple I'll, uh, I'll never forget the moment when I first got into space. And for me, it was an accomplishment of something that I dreamed about for many, many years. And I thought we all watched Director NCD, watched him as a little Well, when I was growing up, I thought being an astronaut was the coolest thing you could possibly do. You know, there's a whole lot more in the way of inspiration in being able to see another human being out there exploring and expressing what they see and how they feel and and and, and, and all the new things that that they're that they're learning. You know, it's just in our nature as human beings to explore and want to learn and, and to know more. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, main engine ignition. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia on a mission combining science and the practical aspects of space. Liftoff confirmed. Roger that. Roger roll, Columbia. Roger roll, Columbia. The amount of thrust and the temperatures and the speeds and everything that's going on during an ascent just pushes our engineering right to its limits. Columbia, go with throttle up. Some of my favorite moments to remember have actually been from training with this crew. And um, our, we have a great crew. We get along together really well. The seven of us that have been training together for SCS-107 have really bonded and had a lot of really good times. I think the justification for sending humans in space is that the end goal is to put humans in places beyond Earth. Maybe start colonies or new places to live and expand the human race on different planets. Space is so international because whenever you see pictures or photos from space, you see one nice blue, beautiful blue earth, no uh, borders, nothing uh, at all. So it is so international that it should be international. During the early morning lights or the late afternoon lights, and what I mean there is how the light is on the ground. You can see shadows or sparkles, uh, and they just look very magical. Now at an altitude of 25 miles, traveling at a speed of 2,900 miles an hour. The next event will be burnout and separation of twin solid rocket boosters. But when those main engines cut off, and you reach space, and all of a sudden you go from being pushed back in your seat to the microgravity of space and you're sort of thrown forward and then everything around you starts to float. It's just this magical moment. All of our astronauts, of course, are uh, now suited as they are making their way to the astronaut band. Commander Rick Husban, Space Specialist Elon Ramon, Pilot William McCool, and Mission Specialist Michael Anderson, David Brown, Laurel Clark, and Colt Nachapa. On board and in the process of conducting the voice checks. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 20 seconds and counting. 15 seconds. 11. 10. Nine, eight, seven. We have a go for main engine start. Five, four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the international research mission finally underway. Roger, roll, Columbia. 
Columbia now rolling on to the proper azimuth for a 39-degree inclination to orbit. Shuttle in a heads-down, wings-level position for the 8.5-minute ride to orbit. 30 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines beginning to throttle back in a three-step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Columbia already two and a half miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, four and a half miles in altitude, the main engines beginning to rev up to full throttle, 104% of rated performance. Columbia, you send your go at throttle up. We copy go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Husband, joined on the flight deck by pilot Willie McCool, flight engineer Colt Nachavla, and mission specialist Dave Brown. Mission Specialist Laurel Clark, Payload Commander Mike Anderson, and Payload Specialist Elon Ramon seated down on the mid-deck. One minute, 26 seconds into the flight. Columbia 10 miles downrange, 13 miles in altitude, traveling at 1,800 miles an hour. It's away from solid rocket booster separation. Everything looking good on board, Columbia. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming the shuttle for a precise target in space for main engine cutoff. Columbia now 43 miles downrange, 35 miles in altitude, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The propulsion officer and mission control reporting that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Columbia with a boost uphill for the next 90 seconds. Myself, Cosma, working on the Zeolite Crystal Growth Experiment. Uh, this study is being uh, originated from Johnson DIs to be able to grow bigger cells in space and thus be able to differentiate them better. Uh, Laurel is performing uh, an analysis of the constituents of the media that is to feed these cells. She will insert what is being performed here where the crew members are working on various regimens of breeding protocols. This is a view from the orbiter mid-deck where the crew members actually live. Uh, this the scene is being recorded at the time of a handover when the red ship is talking to the blue ship, telling them about what happened during their day. In the background, while the crew is drinking from their drinking bags, you can see the sleep station with one of them with an open door. husband here in Space Tab, uh, the double research module, he's working on activating the water loop 